Dun, 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 dun. Going live. Oh, wow. That's like really close. Let's. Can we back up just a little bit? I did not realize my camera was that close. That's, that's a little. That's not a whole lot better. A little bit better. We're going to try to make it work. Hello. I'm Amanda Call. I'm going to draw a comic page right now. I just have a blank piece of paper. There is nothing on it. So first, we're going to start by making sure we're on the right side of the paper, because they have slightly different textures. Yeah, I'm on the right side. Which is not as important right now, but which will be important when I ink later. One side is a little bit more textured than the other. So what I'm going to do first is just mark out my live area for my comic page. I'm using an 11 by 17 piece of smooth Bristol. There's random bits of stuff on my paper. The live area for comic page is 10 by 15. Well, a standard American comic page. So I'm using my ruler to mark off the edges here. And make sure that I have a 10 by 15 live area to work with. Oh, oh as I bump into the desk. Good job. Now, what is that? And one more across the bottom. And now I have my 10 by 15 live area. Let me see if I can back my camera up just a little. Just a little. It's just still kind of close. That's a little better. You can see a little bit more now. All right. So up at the top. I'm going to write that we are working on chapter 25, page seven. All right, so hello. Hey, hey Barney, hey Philip. So nice to have you joining. So uh, I just got my live area laid out, and I'm going to show you. I've got my my thumbnails just just over here. I have my script over here as well, but you're not going to see it. <laughs> Those thumbnails are going to tell me what I'm doing as far as where my panel borders need to go. We're going to start laying those out. I've got a quarter inch gutter between my panels. So if this one is five and a half inches tall and then a quarter inch gutter marked underneath it. I did that on both sides. Now I can just connect it. I'm apparently on the struggle bus this evening. <laughs> Good thing that was pencil. Oh, goodness. Oh, what are we doing? Good thing that was just the pencil. I also have mosquitoes in my house. Right. 
and then nine and a half, and a little bit more on that side. Got a skinny little panel in the middle here. Same thing. Now we're going to have all three tiers marked out. I know a lot of people do this sort of thing like in computer programs these days, but I still do this with a ruler. It's just how I go. This top tier is three even-ish panels. They're not like perfectly even, but they're pretty close. If I was using like the pre-lined stuff, they would be perfectly even, but I'm not. So they're not, but they're close enough. Because yeah, this one will be, this first one is three and a quarter, and the last one is three and a quarter, and the one in the middle is three. So close, close. Oh yeah, I forgot. I was it's sometimes hard to tell with my thumbnails, but this bottom one is actually supposed to be an open panel, so I don't need that second line. Erase, 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 erase. And it's just gonna have a little inset panel down in the corner over here. a little uh, yeah we're just gonna give that I don't need to go all the way to the end of the paper to do this I can just do it from the last panel border there have to make sure that everything is lined up nicely and you're nice and consistent to keep everything square. I know I've mentioned previously, but I will mention again that yes, a lot of people recommend you use a T-square to do this. It's like a big long ruler with like a little, little like cross piece on the end here that makes it look like a T. I don't particularly like those because I have never encountered one that didn't get all wobbly and out of square on me. And also like the edge of my drawing board's not square. I like <laughs> it's it's just not. It's not gonna be. It's not gonna be perfectly square. The edge of my desk isn't perfectly square. None of this is perfectly square. I may as well go off the edge of the paper and not make myself so crazy about it. All right, now I can, I like to, at this stage, do the panel borders using my Faber-Castell pit pen, medium sized, which is a 0.7 if you were looking at it in like other tech pen sizes. And I'm just going to do it one row at a time, following along with my pencil lines, trying not to drop my pen. <sighs> no, no, what are we doing? Well, that will have to get white outed later. White whited out later. I'm not sure what the 
past tense of to white out something is. Inset panel. All right, so I got all of the lines going in that direction. Now we're gonna turn the page 90 degrees and do the lines going in this direction. Remember this big panel down here is actually an open panel, so it will bleed out to the edge of the page. I do not have to put a panel border around it. There we go. Almost there on the panel layouts. So this does take a little bit of time, but really it's not that bad. I mean, I'm going somewhat slowly because I have to kind of be positioned a little bit awkwardly to be on camera. And this has only taken, what, 13 minutes? This goes a little bit faster when I don't have to uh, make sure that I am holding myself in frame. <laughs> So like a lot of things with working traditionally, it might take a little bit more time, but not necessarily as much more time as you think. All right, and there we go. So we now have one, two, three, four, five, six panels laid out on our piece of paper. Now we're going to start roughing in pencils. These little graphite lines that are still left between the panels, I will erase those um, eventually. Since I just did the panel borders and in ink, I don't want to go over and try to erase them right now because that ink is, may, it may be dry to the touch, but it's not like fully set yet. And if I start going at it with an eraser, I will very likely run into a little spot that's still wet. And then I'll have a big nasty ink smear across my page, which I don't want. So I will ignore those little lines for now and I will erase them later. My pencil, however, is quite dull. So I'll take it out of my little extender here and sharpen it real quick. Uh, assuming I can find my pencil sharpener. There it is. Okay. 
I'm gonna leave I'm gonna leave this out where I can find it. Alright. Stick that back in my pencil extender. And reference my little thumbnails here. Hello! Glad to have you joining. So this little this little panel thing here, this little layout thumbnails is the guide that I am using. As you can see, there's a lot of talking, so I've got to put in a lot of word balloons and make sure that I uh, <laughs> leave room for all the talking that needs to happen on this page. So that's usually one of the first things that I plot out. Is making sure I have enough space for those word balloons. And then I just kind of do this rough pass of placeholder blobs that kind of give you the basic composition for a panel. But it just, that's, that's it. That's what's going to happen in this panel, just so that I have the basic, this is what goes here. I have my script right out of frame as well, so I can keep referencing it and make sure that the placeholder balloons that I have in here are also big enough to fit the dialogue that I need on them. That one might end up being a little bit more fat, but yeah, that should work. All right, little cat blob. It's a close up. I'll usually do like a quick, like quickly knock in where the features go just to make sure that they're kind of fitting in the composition because the composition of the of a close up is so much like about a character's expression. So I want to make sure that that's framed the way I want it to be before I go too far. If that makes sense. I don't know if I'm explaining that clearly or not. Whereas on like some of these other panels where you have like multiple figures interacting, it's just making sure that those figures are taking up the right space as opposed to like really focusing on the getting the expression where it belongs. I'm gonna move that word balloon over to balance that a little better. All right. So this is another one with lots of lots of talking. This chapter has a fair amount of talking.
I don't know if this is like necessarily the most visually interesting page I could have chosen for this chapter, but it's or for this section, but it was also the one with the least like spoilery dialogue, so. Scoot some of these word balloons over a little bit so they're not overlapping the figures. <laughs> hey, unqualified. Um, so I do one of these live streams every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern. So this will happen pretty much every week. Uh, every once in a while, I'll work on something else because the comic that I'm working on is my web comic. And so I work on pages of wherever I'm at in the backlog. But sometimes because of that, I will end up kind of running into an issue of like, oh, I can't draw those pages on stream because they'll really spoil the story. So then I have to kind of pause on comic pages and I, I'll work on some other art. Like I'll work on some of my freelance illustration or just some illustrations for myself or whatever, but for the most part, I will I will be streaming every Tuesday and it'll usually be comics. Sometimes other art, but pretty much every Tuesday with rare exception. And I appreciate that, Barney. Thanks. <laughs> All right. So over here, we've got more, so many more word balloons. What's going on in the script here? Okay. Kind of weird. I have to start a, a person with a pelvis just to get everything to line up properly because of like I need the cat to be here and his little paws need to be on her legs so it's like okay I gotta start with drawing her pelvis to make sure that she fits where she belongs in here which I mean I guess it worked just kind of strange it's not normally where I start a figure but okay Where do I usually start? I usually start with the head. Um, sometimes if it's like an exceptionally complicated pose, I'll start with center mass. So I'll start with the rib cage. Um, but most of the time I start with the head because most of the time in most panels, um, the character's face and their expression is going to be one of the more important things that you're trying to get across. So usually I start with the head. I'm not going to say that starting with the head always is the best plan. It's <laughs> usually where I start. That's like, she's got like Superman chest going on. We're going to shave that rib gauge down a little bit. Okay. And last panel to just knock in a quick placeholder blob.
And it's a sad cat face. Okay, so I now have, after 25 minutes, I now have all my panels laid out and everything very loosely laid in. Granted, this page is a little bit on the easy side because uh, this scene is happening at night. <laughs> and so the background is mostly darkness. I love these pages. <laughs> I love the occasional easy page where instead of killing myself rendering background elements, I just get to fill it in with some blackness, just some blackness. So in case you're not familiar, my backgrounds usually look like, like this love, like, oh, look at all that detail of the, the hills and stuff. And, and that took me a very long time to draw an ink. And so every once in a while, it's nice to give myself a break and just have characters sitting around in the dark talking. Most of my pages aren't like this, but when they are, it's a nice break. But of course that means the character's expressions and acting becomes even more important because they're like literally the only thing you see. Where's my eraser? Where's my eraser? Like, Drake, my talking cat character, it's always like a very delicate balance between making him look enough like a cat and also enough like a person to still be expressive. Uh, avocado toast is amazing. You are correct, Barney. Oh, yes. Last time I went to the grocery store, they didn't really have any good avocados. Hopefully next time. As I go, I clean up some thunder drawing. Not all of it. I don't really chase myself around too much cleaning up every little stray line, but I try to get at least enough of it so that it's clear when I go to ink what I'm supposed to be inking versus what is no longer relevant. So all this back here. It's just gonna be darkness. Darkness. Look at that. No background. <laughs> this is not normal. Not normal for me to have like no backgrounds.
turning the page this turning the page this way so that I can actually draw this face accurately. So if I tried to draw Kamaria's face sideways, I would certainly mess it up. Certainly, certainly. A lot of that is going to end up in shadow. i got to figure that out in just a second here. First, I'm going to... All the crazy hair everywhere. All right. Oh, she's facing away from the fire, which is the only light source. So I do not want to completely obscure her features, but I do want to make it clear that she is facing away from the light source. So we're going to have a good amount of her face in shadow here. Hopefully this will like actually work when I go to ink it. Trying to follow the planes of her face and make that make sense. Again, it just looks very rough and kind of sketchy right now, but hopefully that'll provide me with enough of a roadmap when I go to ink it to make that make sense. It's one of the things that's kind of a key difference for penciling to ink, penciling for yourself to ink later versus penciling for someone else to ink later. Because if you're penciling for someone else to ink later, then you really have to make sure that those de decisions that you're making are extremely clear, making it very obvious where someone is meant to ink later and what the intended effect is supposed to be. Otherwise, you're just going to end up with a very confused mess. 
or they're going to make their best guess, and it might be something completely not what you intended. But when I'm doing it for myself, I can just kind of like give myself a, a basic guide and then be like, okay, this just really needs to serve to remind me what I was trying to do here, rather than to have it perfectly laid out. fire back here, just because I don't think I have it appearing anywhere else on this page. Good idea to kind of remind people that that's what's going on here. We're around a campfire. We are not just floating in the void. Ah, mosquitoes, leave me alone. There's a mosquito perched on my finger. Goodness. What was I doing? Oh yeah, I was just kind of filling in the void. Void, void, void. Where are we at? 38 minutes. Making good time. Already, there's another mosquito buzzing me in the face. Please go away. Very serious cat face.
All right, gonna clean that up just a little bit. Panel. So we've got the top tier. Top tier is penciled. Done. 42 minutes. Let's see how far we can get. So you may have noticed on like the top tier here, I didn't do a lot of drawing in between the very basic blob placeholder sketch and the, the finished 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 for me, finished drawing. Um, but now that we're down here getting into a more complicated kind of pose, then I will do a little bit more of underdrawing before finishing the drawing because I want to make sure I know where all of the limbs and fabric folds and everything are going. So you can see I had to figure out where all of her body actually existed <laughs> before trying to go any further. And then I'll kind of start doing, she's got like loose flowing robes, so we've got to figure out how they're hanging off of her body like this. Wen is always a lot of fun to draw because between her loose flowing robes and then her hair and the big pendant she's always wearing, the Heart of Nora, she gets a lot of like motion all the time. There's a lot of movement to whatever she's doing. And obviously I exaggerate that beyond what's necessarily realistic just because it's fun and it makes her character more expressive. Got her big robes all bundled around her as she's sitting cross-legged.
Ow. Ow. Ugh, terrible mosquitoes. Come on. All right, I'm going to sharpen my pencil real quick before I solidify that sketch. It certainly feels like Maine mosquitoes are the size of cars. The bigger issue is that they just get in everywhere. I'm like not even sure how all these little jerks for getting in my house, but they are. All right, we'll see. We've got a little more than 10 minutes left, so we'll see if we can get this panel finished before time. I like to only keep these streams to about an hour so that at the end of the hour I can get up and stretch, you can get up and stretch, we can all go get a glass of water. It's a good idea. Ow, ow, ow. Oh, jerk. I'm trying to draw. Stop trying to suck my blood. You horrible little monsters. Can you tell Wen's freaking out? She's just freaking out a little bit. Yeah, yeah, get back in there. All right, we're in the last 10 ish minutes. So while I'm working on this, I will do the YouTube things and remind you that I'm Amanda Call. I'm working on my webcomic, Age of Night, which you can find at ageofnight.com. That's A G E O F N I G H T.com. I update with a new comic page every Wednesday. And the whole thing is available for free online. However, if you would like to help support me, there's a few ways that you can do that. I do have a Patreon, patreon.com slash age of night. 
where you can get all your comic pages a week ahead of time, plus other like behind the scenes stuff, free comics for signing up, all sorts of cool stuff. And I super appreciate it. Don't have to. You can read the whole thing for free without it. But it's cool if you decide you would like to. You can also help support the Inspire Horror... Oh, oh <laughs> the mosquitoes. They inspire horror authors and make the local population stronger. Yes. They also occasionally harass the moose so intensely that they go and stand out in the middle of the road to try to escape them. And then they get hit by cars. Which is bad. Um... What was I saying? I was doing my spiel. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, this channel. So I do these live streams every Tuesday at 8 p.m. So if you would like to catch more of those, then make sure that you like this video, subscribe to my channel, and hit the bell thingy so that you can know when I go live or upload other videos. I do edited videos as well where I, like, either create other pieces of art on time-lapse or talk about art creation stuff, art supplies, that sort of thing. That sort of thing. You can also get on the track of helping to support me. You can always buy copies of the comic. You can buy high-quality PDFs from Skirmisher Publishing at their website, skirmisher.com, of the first three volumes. So that gets you all the way from the prologue to chapter 21 of the comic. I'm on chapter 25 right now. We'll eventually release a volume four. I'm working on it. Um... The actual volumes of the comic, like the books of the comic, do actually contain bonus material that's not available online, which is a nice little perk for buying them. Um, it's not anything like that makes or breaks the plot, but just fun little bonus stuff. So the PDFs you can buy from skirmisher.com. You can buy physical copies of the book from my friendly local bookstore, The Briar Patch, in Bangor, Maine. You can look them up online, give them a call. They should have my books available on their web store. If they don't, just call them. They can get them because I can I can give them to them. Uh, you can also find ebook copies and physical copies on that big giant website where you can find anything. You know the one. I think that's all the things. Oh, yeah, you can, other socials, you can find me on Twitter at Age of Night, and you can find me at Instagram, on Instagram at Amanda Call Art. Now I think I've covered all the things. Because the other thing I used to tell you about was conventions and events, which are not happening. Eventually, they're going to happen again. Someday. Someday. Theoretically soon. That bulk of her robes twisted around her leg there. And she's kind of all scrunched up to sit on the ground. I'll try to get that done 
before I call it for the evening. I think we're gonna call that good for this evening. So I'll finish that panel next time and move on to the lettering. So at the beginning of the hour, I had a blank piece of paper. I have laid out all the panel borders, roughed in all of the basic spots for things and all the panels, and I have drawn three and a half out of six panels. So that's what we got this time. We will continue this next week at the same time here on my channel, 8 p.m. Eastern. Thanks, everybody, for coming and hanging out and leaving comments, and I will see you next time. Bye.